How you going guys? Zach here from the Reptile Park. Now I'm Head of Venom and today we're going to show you a couple of different snake milkings. Uh, we're going to do three main snakes and uh, they're pretty uh, famous ones here in Australia. We've got the King Brown or the Mulga snake. Uh, we've got the Eastern Brown and then we're going to finish up on our, uh, our record holding Coastal Taipan. Now every week uh, we extract from half the collection. So every uh, two weeks the entire collection gets extracted from and uh, we're the sole supplier of terrestrial snake venom for the Australian Anti-Venom Program. So we're not just doing this for fun. Uh, we do love these animals, but uh, we want to actually contribute to the Anti-Venom Program here. Uh, in Australia, no matter who you are, if you're bitten by one of our terrestrial snakes, uh, you get the Anti-Venom free of charge. Now, I'm going to um, grab one of these snakes here and uh, hang with me for one second. So the one we're going to start with is the King Brown or the Mulga snake. Uh, we thought we'd go big today. So this is one of our largest Australian venomous snakes. Uh, these guys can reach up to uh, a bit under three meters in length, uh, but this is a fairly substantial size kingy. Now, the problem with these snakes here, they're all very long body and uh, extremely strong. So I'm actually gonna have to get Sam to grab the back end of this one. So this doesn't hurt the snake in any way, shape or form. Uh, all we're doing is pinning him on a nice soft pinning pad and uh, that allows us to restrain him. And then we've got to convince him to bite onto a jar. <laughs> yep. Cheeky little bugger. So you can see just how strong he is pushing that pinner all the way around. Now, the snakes aren't stupid animals. They don't want to bite the jar. They want to bite me. Thing is the target. And there we go. So come in nice and close, guys. You should be able to see a nice little bit of yellow venom. And if he bites down again, come on buddy, there we go. You'll see that fang poking through just above my finger there. So check out just how big this guy is. If you have a look down towards Sam, you can see just how thick and long this guy is. Incredibly strong animal and uh, very, very difficult to restrain. Now the problem with this species butt is when you get them to bite onto stuff, they don't tend to let go. So he's just gonna have a bit of a chew. Now, the king brown or the mulga snake is actually part of the black snake family. They're not part of the brown snakes, which is a common misconception. And uh, what these guys do out in the wild is they like to eat reptiles. So they've got these really short, stumpy fangs to punch straight through those scales. Now, the reason he has to hold on and pump as much venom as he can, you can see that's quite a bit, is uh, he's taking on things like monitors, like our goannas. Now, if he grabs onto one of them and uh, then lets go, it's gonna turn around and tear him to shreds. So. What he does is he grabs it, he bulldogs it, and uh, makes sure it doesn't get away. Now, the trick with these guys is sometimes actually getting them off the vial. So, I'm gonna get you to jump back for one sec. I'm gonna try and get him off. Come on, buddy, let go. There we go. So, I'll pop that vial there nice and safe, and we're gonna plop him away. So, Zach has to concentrate a lot today, so there might be times where we're just listening sure and, and watching. Them. So that's your typical vial method. Now we get them to bite on the jar. The plastic on top is stretched to about the same tension or tightness as human skin. They punch through that thinking they've bitten meat and they give a ton of venom. The next snake that we're gonna milk is the Eastern Brown. Now we extract venom from them very differently. Give me one sec. What we use is the pipetting method. Now Eastern Browns have incredibly short fangs and uh, quite a small amount of venom you'll see. So. We put that pipette over the tip of the fangs. I apologize about the shaking. As always, bit of nerves. Bit, and of, bit adrenaline of adrenaline too, yeah. <laughs> so we'll place the tip of the fang into the pipette. Then we should start to see a little bit of venom excreted. Uh, what I'll actually do is massage his venom glands. Again, this doesn't hurt him. Uh, we're trying to get that little bit more venom. So give me one second, I'm gonna grab him out. And uh, this one's particularly naughty, so you might have to bear with me. I'll be a bit quiet. It's incredible the, the concentration that it takes for this kind of stuff. You can't let your guard down at all. So this is our Eastern Brown. And uh, one of the distinguishing identification factors is those beautiful orange spots on his belly. You'll see him up in that typical S position and uh, they'll display those spots. Now. Yep. 
So, you get that fang into the pipette there, and what you should see, if we're lucky, is a tiny little bit of venom coming out. Now, if you've got very good eyes, you'll see just in front of my finger there, there's a little uh, bubble of uh, liquid, and that's the venom. So, you don't have to get a whole lot of this to knock you over. Just a tiny amount, and uh, you're in a bad way. But as I said, luckily here in Australia, we have a free anti-venom program, or a federal, federally funded one. And uh, when you get to hospital, they fill you up free of charge. So you can see the difference in the amount of venom we get. That tiny little drop in the end of the pipette there is about all we're going to get from this guy. So quite a, uh, a nerve-wracking experience after to pipette these. As you can tell, your fingers are very, very close. Uh, but this is the safest and most effective way for us to get the venom out. They're absolutely gorgeous animals. Now... I'm going to plop him away. Right, I'll get you to latch that one too. Beautiful. Right, now the final snake. Now uh, this one's name's Nervous Ned. He's actually our record holder. Now, uh, this particular animal gives a huge amount of venom. Now, the snakes here at the reptile park have been selectively bred to produce more venom than your average. Uh, this particular one can produce up to five times the wild equivalent. Uh, so an astonishing amount of venom and uh, a truly terrifying amount if it was to go wrong. So I will be a bit quieter with this one, guys. You'll have to bear with me, uh, but I promise you the results will be spectacular. Now, uh, I'm gonna grab him out. So Zach has beat his own, you know, venom yield record pretty consistently over the last few years. He's out. Uh, Star Venom Extractor, of course, as the head of Venom. Now, as you can see, fairly large specimen, uh, absolutely stunning colours, and that nice big coffin shaped head. Now, what you would consider as cheeks, so on the back side of his head there, that's what his venom glands are. Now, uh, they run through a little venom duct to the fang, and uh, what we're hoping to see is a nice little pool of pink venom in the bottom of this jar. Okay. Yep, grab it, Sam. Beautiful. As you can see, very, very strong. Now, this guy shouldn't take too much convincing. Come on, buddy. Good boy. There we go. One more bite. There we go. So you can see quite a substantial amount of venom in the bottom there. What we'll do is give those venom glands a little bit of a massage. Now, there's not much pressure in that. It's just kind of stimulating the venom glands to kind of keep producing it. But as you can see, it's just pouring out now. Now, this particular animal like, also has extremely large fangs. And uh, back in the early days, uh, before the release of antivenom, uh, it was nearly 100% fatality rate from this species. Uh, since the release of this antivenom uh, and all of our antivenoms, we're very uh, lucky and we only have about one to three uh, fatalities each year from venomous snakes. To put that in perspective, cows attribute the 12 deaths a year. Uh, now, the most important thing to do if you do see a snake is to leave it alone. Don't try and do this. Don't be like me and Sam and uh, take care. Now, my hand's starting to cramp up, so I'm gonna get you guys to jump back for a sec. I'm gonna put him away and then uh, we'll go through a little bit more. I'll get you to lock that one up as well, Sam. Sorry, guys. Nice work, Zach. That was incredible. <laughs> Great right. yield. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. Uh, that was a pretty spectacular yield. Now, that's not going to be the record, but it's going to be bloody close. As you can see, a huge amount. Now, let me grab the other one. As you can see, venom comes in various colours and uh, uh, basically uh, densities. Uh, the king brown one, quite thick, almost like a jelly. Where the type in, uh, very liquid. So I'm gonna pop them down as my hands are shaking pretty bad. But very, very simple. And we'll go through snake bite uh, first aid as it's one of the most important things here in Australia. Now you'll hear a lot of things about cutting the bite site, trying to suck out the venom. That's no good. Don't even worry about trying that. All you need is one of these. It's an elasticized bandage. Uh, we use the ones called indicator bandages. So if you have a look at the rectangles at the correct tension, they become squares. So you can't put these on incorrectly. 
Uh, one of these, along with a uh, uh, mobilization, will uh, give you up to four times the amount of time you'd have without one. So very important. If you don't have a bandage, um, basically what you want to do is make one. Rip up your shirts, rip up your pants, uh, and get yourself to hospital. I'll get Sam, my, demon, uh, my volunteer, to come over here. We're going to say he's been bitten on the wrist. Now, the important thing to do is remove any jewellery, uh, watches, rings, because you're going to swell up. Anything like that can cut off circulation, so very important to remove the, uh, the jewellery. If you're wearing long sleeves like uh, Sam here, don't worry about getting rid of them or trying to cut them off. Go straight over the top. Get yourself the bandage. We're going to go twice around the bite side. One, two, making sure they stay nice and square. We're then going to go down to the end of the limb. This basically just immobilizes the limb and uh, stops you from wiggling your fingers. But you want to leave the tips of the fingers exposed so they can check for circulation. Now we're going to jump right back up and over and we're going to go the entire way up the limb here. Now trying to keep those as square as possible. Now, like Sam with the long sleeve shirt, you're going to go straight over the top. Don't worry about trying to take it off. If you're going over uh, pants or jeans, go straight over the top as well. Alrighty, we're getting there. Right to the top of the limb. And then keep it nice and still. Now, you want to keep it nice and straight uh, along the side of your body or across. And uh, the less you move that limb, the longer you'll have. So call an ambulance, get yourself to hospital, and uh, they'll figure out what you've been bitten by. You don't need to take the snake in. You don't need photos of it. Uh, in fact, the nurses and doctors will very much prefer you don't bring them in. And uh, what they'll do is they'll take a swab and some bloods, and they can tell exactly what you were bitten by. Now, you then receive the antivenom, and you'll be right as rain. But uh, we've covered pretty much everything now. We're going to jump to a couple of questions that I'm sure you guys have been throwing in. Yeah, so we saw um, the immobilization technique with your bandage there. What's the point of that? Why do we need to immobilize the, the limb? Uh, that's a great question. So for a long time, venom was thought to travel through your blood system. Uh, unless it hits a vein or a, an artery, that's not the case. It travels through the lymphatic system. So if you've ever been scratched by a rose bush, that clear liquid that comes out, uh, that's what it's traveling through. So the bandage, if applied with consistent pressure along the limb there, uh, what it does is it uh, constricts the, the uh, ability for the lymphatic uh, system to work. Now, uh, basically what happens is it stops the, uh, the venom from traveling up the limb, and obviously that's very important to stop it from getting onto all your major organs. So what else can you do? If you've been bitten by a stake and you've been applied the correct first aid, what are some other things you can do to you know, help yourself or your friend last a bit longer before we get to the hospital? So the most important thing, and I know it's going to sound strange, is to stay nice and calm. The more you're panicking, the higher your blood, uh, your heart rate, uh, the more that all starts moving around. So if you stay nice and calm, let everyone else run around, sort it all out, sit down, and uh, you'll all be all right. Call an ambulance or get someone to get you to hospital as soon as possible. That's the, uh, the most important thing to do. So we saw uh, the two venom extraction techniques, the pipette and the vial. Can all snakes have either or, or is it specific snakes have one and the other? So we can do the pipetting method on all species of snakes. Uh, it gets quite scary when you're using that on uh, something like a coastal taipan. As you saw, quite long fangs, a huge amount of venom, and uh, they've got this nasty thing where they try and uh, almost bite before the jar or the, the pipette. So we tend to only use them on our really small yielding species, like our eastern browns. Now, by using that technique, we saw nearly 280% increase on the yields that we were getting beforehand, which is incredible for me. It means I need to keep less snakes, milk less snakes, and uh, therefore have less chance of being bitten. How many snakes a week do you milk? So uh, every week we milk between 100 and 150 snakes. Uh, so quite a tall order. It's a couple of hours stuck in the room with a, a little bit of music on and a, quite a stressful situation. Uh, we try and keep it as, uh, as short as possible uh, for the snakes uh, benefit. Uh, the milkings you saw today would have been two or three times longer than what we do upstairs. So it doesn't hurt the snake at all, does it? No, so everything has been taken into consideration to stop any uh, damage or harm coming to the snakes. We love these animals. Uh, from the pinning pad down there, uh, it's nice and soft, so basically like a big pillow, uh, to the disc that spreads out any weight. So even if I'm pushing down, it doesn't hurt at all. Now, uh, we also use the jars with the plastic membrane to uh, simulate a normal bite. So it's exactly the same as what he'd be doing in the wild, uh, trying to bite a food item. And um, how often do, does each individual snake get milked? So each individual snake only gets milked on a fortnightly basis, every two weeks. Uh, we found that's the best uh, amount of time uh, for them to get another feed in, to relax again, and uh, 
basically be nice and calm for the rest of the time. How much venom do you need to make a vial of antivenom? So that's a good question. For an average milking, uh, it takes roughly 40 snakes to make one vial of antivenom. So it's not a one for one thing. I'd love it if it was, uh, which is why we do uh, selectively breed our snakes. Uh, if we can get a less amount of snakes producing more venom, we only have to milk quite a small amount. So for our taipans, I believe we're sitting at about 12 to 14 individuals per vial of antivenom, which is fantastic. So once we have the, the raw venom, what do we do with it? How does it become antivenom? Right, so once we've extracted, we then freeze it. Uh, we then freeze dry it, so turn it into a crystalline form. It takes away all the moisture and just leaves me with a powder. Uh, in that powdered form, it's quite safely shipped down to a place in Melbourne called BioCSL or Securus, uh, which is our Commonwealth Serum Laboratories. Down there, they rehydrate it and then hyperenvenomate a horse. So what that means is give him a tiny dose on the first day and then slowly increase that dosage. The reason we use a horse is because he's quite a large animal, quite tame, and uh, they have a natural immune response to snake venom. So he doesn't get sick, doesn't get sore, and uh, the dose has increased over a 12 month period. At the end of the 12 months, the horse is receiving six times his lethal dose uh, with no ill effects. Again, not sick, not sore, no internal issues. You then withdraw a small amount of blood, spin that blood through a centrifuge, split the red and white blood cells. The red blood cells go back to the horse so it feels happy and healthy. Those white blood cells, which is your venom resistant plasma, is kept, purified, and then that's your anti venom. So when you receive anti venom, you take on the strength of that horse's immune system, which is an absolutely incredible process. Okay, Zach, last question. So you, the work that you do has saved, you know, thousands and thousands of lives around Australia. Can you think of a time where you kind of witnessed that impact? Yeah, so I've been in my current role for about six years now. Um, during that time, I've met three people that the program saved. So we don't get to see them every day, uh, but the days that you do, it's when you really need it. Uh, the one day that sticks into my head, uh, I was upstairs, I was uh, covered in snake poo, which uh, sometimes happens. So I was just in a bit of a bad mood. I come down here in the middle of school hol holidays, pre-COVID, so there was 1,500 people around the, uh, the show pit here. And uh, after I'd done the extractions, I was still a bit grumpy. And as I was walking away, a guy came to me and uh, said, oh, do you mind hanging around for a second? Uh, he asked me to put the snakes down. I'm kind of looking around, this is a bit weird. I've got a king brown in a bag and a tiger in a box. And uh, at that point, he then uh, reached out his hand and said, I just wanted to shake your hand. You're the reason I'm still here. Uh, six months beforehand, uh, he was out in his garden and uh, was bitten by a, uh, a tiger snake, received three vials of antivenom, and the antivenom was the sole reason he survived. Um, at that point, I'm nearly in tears walking up, uh, and it kind of makes everything worthwhile. Uh, you have days where it's a bit scary, but um, yeah, those moments there, they, uh, they make all the, the work worth it. That was awesome, Zach. Thanks so much. Great first live. <laughs> Did a great job. We pushed through it. All right. We'll see you next week, guys. All right. Catch us.